Now we're upstairs in our live fire laboratory, standing next to a st solar storage tank. We have an operating system here at Beeson that provides us domestic hot water. And this is a storage tank that will store the energy that we've captured from the collector up on the roof. Our storage tanks are essentially an indirect tank, meaning that it has a coil inside of it. And that coil is where the heat transfer fluid passes through. As the fluid passes through that coil, the energy is released to the water that's inside it, which is your domestic potable water. And the energy can be stored in the tank for longer periods of time and it can be used whenever it's needed. Wiesman offers a variety of different tank models. We have single coil tanks, which be used in a two tank design. And we also have dual coil tanks, which be used in a one tank design. We offer tanks that are made of stainless steel. We offer tanks that are made steel with a Seraprotect coating on them. We have a variety of different sizes available. And storage tank does have to be selected and sized according to the quantity of collection that you have on your roof. The next component that we're standing next to here is the pump station. In order to get the energy from the collector down to the storage tank, there has to be piping. And to be able to move the fluid through that pipe, we need to have a pump as the circulator. The pump station here is a unique package where it has a variety of different components built into it as one unit, as opposed to having individual parts. Wiesman offers different sizes of pump stations. We have a Solar Divicon DN20, and we also have a Solar Divicon DN25 for larger systems there. The, the pump station has unique features to it, along with having the important pressure gauge as to what the system pressure is and what the temperatures are. It also has a pressure relief valve and an expansion tank. One thing to understand about a Wiesman Vitasol system is that they're indirect pressurized closed loops, meaning that the system has to be charged up with that heat transfer fluid that passes through the collector and passes through the coil of the tank. In order to do that, this system has to be hooked up to a charging station, and antifreeze fluid has to be pumped into the circuit, and air has to be removed. Once the system is free of all air and completely filled with fluid, the system is now ready to operate. The last major component that we have in the solar water heating system is our solar differential control. This control is somewhat unique in that it has inputs and outputs, and it controls the operation of the circulator pump to move the fluid from the collector down to the storage tank. One thing you're probably wondering is, how does this controller know whether or not the sun is out? And that's done by the accomplishment of two sensors, a sensor that's located up at the collector on the roof and also a sensor that's located at the storage tank. The differential between those two sensors is what dictates whether or not the controller turns the pump on or off. At night, the temperature differential between the two collectors is close and the pump is not operating. And during the day when the sun is out, the differential temperature between the two sensors is farther apart, which typically causes the pump to operate. This particular control here is a multi-load control sophisticated one that has a variety of different options on it. You'll notice on the screen here that there's a display showing the actual configuration of the, of the system and also displays the various temperatures of all the sensors in the circuit there. Above this, you'll notice that there is a data logger. This is a device that's hooked up to the controller to record on a daily basis or even an hourly basis the information as to how much energy has been produced. This can be valuable in tracking the performance of your system to find out if it's working up to its maximum. One of the last things I wanted to show you, since it's, we're unable to go on the roof of our facility today due to the snow, is an image here of our solar collector. It happens to be a vacuum tube collector. And here is an image of our collector that's on our roof providing us with hot water for our office facility. The particular model is a 200T SP2A. It happens to have 24 tubes in it. And as you can see, it's mounted on a flat roof. So this particular collector had to be racked up on framing in order to get into the proper tilt that we wanted for year-round performance. Wiesman does offer a variety of different hardware packages in order for you to mount your collector either on a sloped roof, on a flat roof, on a ground mount, or a wall. So you'll have to decide which hardware package is most appropriate for your application and your specific installation. In conclusion, 
Wiesman offers a variety of different solar components that you can use for either a residential application or a commercial application to get free energy from the sun and use it for heating your domestic hot water. In future episodes, we're going to discuss in detail more of the components, how you design them for engineers and for contractors, and give you a better understanding of the specifics of the products that we offer. So thank you for joining us today on Vito Tech with Wiesman. Mm -hmm.